In this video, we're going to learn how to compose queries using DuckDB's Python package. Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. Now we might be asking, why would we want to compose queries? And I think this is best answered by a recent blog post by Gwen Shapira called Things Databases Don't Do But Should. And there are lots of interesting things in this blog post, but the bit that stood out to me is if we scroll down a little bit, Gwen starts talking about the difference between data APIs and SQL. And data APIs are composable, and that means that we can reuse things, we can minimize redundancies, and we can we get better maintainability. So I want to show you what DuckDB are doing around this area, because I think it's quite interesting. OK, so let's come over to our Python REPL, and we'll import DuckDB. And then we're going to create a database called ATP underscore Duck. And we'll also install the HTTPFS extension. And we're going to be exploring how this works with Jeff Sackman's tennis data set. So this, he has lots of different stuff in this repository, but what we're interested in is he has the matches going back to the sort of 1960s. Now let's have a look at how to import that data. So we're going to create a base URL that points at the top level of the GitHub repo, and then we'll create a CSV files uh, array that has the match, the, the match CSV files going all the way from 1968 up till 2023. Once we've done that, we're going to write our query to create a table called matches. We're going to read from those CSV files, and then we're going to override a couple of the columns. And then finally, we'll pass in the parameter CSV files. And we'll let that run. It takes kind of 15, 20 seconds to run. And then once it's done, we're going to just alter the table to fix the tawny date column. So that one has like this kind of weird uh, integer structure. And so we're just going to convert it into a date type instead. Now that we've done that, we're going to start querying this database. So we're going to call the table function and give it the matches the name matches, and we'll assign that to a variable called matches. And now if we have a look at that using the type function, you can see that this is a duck db pi relation. And so if we then look at that, so if we call matches, uh, we can see like it, it loads in, it shows us some uh, a preview of the data in that table. And notice, but notice at the bottom, it says question mark number of rows. So it hasn't actually evaluated the whole thing. In fact, it's only looked at the first 10,000 rows, and then in this case, it's only shown us 20. And it's effectively like just a, we've effectively just captured, captured even that table, and we can now do stuff with it. So if we have a look at the list of functions available, so if we call DIR and then matches, we can see we've got loads of stuff. So we can call count, we can call columns, we can call min, max, there's loads of things that we can, uh, we can do on this variable. Let's just do a simple one. So let's count it. So this will actually force it to check how many records are in this table. And you can see we get 188,000 or so. We can ask it, what are the columns? And you can see there are loads of columns. It's a very, very wide table. So this is quite a good choice for, uh, for a column store like DuckDB. Let's start by finding the players that have won the most matches. So we're going to start from the matches relation. And then we'll call the aggregate function. So this is kind of the equivalent to doing like, a, in this case, uh, we're doing a, gr a group by winner name and winner IOC, and then we're counting the number of wins. We're then doing order by the wins and get us five records. Once we've done that, let's print it out to the console, and you can see we get back, these are the list of players who have won the most matches. It's going up to about just sort of two or three weeks ago. So you can see we get Jimmy Connors' is top, Federer, Nadal, and then we've got Djokovic down in fifth place. We can have a look what that query's doing. So if we go call the ATP duck at SQL and say, well, we're just going to tell it to only show us the physical plan. And then we can call the explain function on the biggest winners variable, biggest winners relation. And you can see it comes back. So if we go down the bottom, we can see there's a sequence scan on the winner name and the winner IOC. Then they get projected. There's a group by. And, and then finally, we, we pull out the, the top five values. Let's have a look at something else now. So on the, on the, on these relations, so we'll go back to the matches relation. We're going to create a new one where we're going to call Britain matches, and we're going to filter that matches relation or the matches table just to grab the matches that uh, have British players participating. Once we've done that, we can then actually filter it. So let's say let's just get the losers, and we'll work out who did they lose to. So what country did they lose to? So we'll do an aggregate on the winner IOC, count that up, order it, get the top ten. So you can see here we get back. British players have lost to the Americans the most, and Australians and French, and Spanish. So what happens if we want to exclude the USA? So we could we could go and write a SQL query to do that, or we could 
create a US matches relation. And now we can write a query that says, hey, get me those uh, Britain matches, filter it so that we are the loser, except when there's US, it's fil get filtered all those ones out and then kind of do the same aggregate aggregation ordering and limit before as before. And this time you see it just takes out that top row. And we, now we've got Australia, France, Spain, <laughs> Great Britain and South Africa. Now we could th then do the same thing for Australia. So we could say, hey, I'm going to create an Oz matches variable or relation. And you see, we get that. And we could then create another couple of relations. So we could say, hey, I'm going to get the matches where it was Britain versus USA. So that's Britain matches intersecting with USA. I could get Britain versus Australia. So that's Britain intersecting with Australia. And then we could combine them together. So we could say, hey, I'm going to go Britain versus USA combined get union with Britain versus Australia. And then I'm going to do a projection which gets me like builds me like a string that concatenates the, the, the names of the countries, the winner, and then, then I get the winner, the loser, the score. And then we're just going to extract the year from the date. And if we have a look at the, the, those results, you can see now we're down to the individual matches. So we can see Seb Corder beat Andy Murray, Mackenzie McDonald beat Dan Evans. So these are matches that happened at the beginning of 2023. The other really cool thing that you can do, which kind of loops back to what Gwen was saying about SQL not being composable, is that you can do what they call replacement scans. And this is kind of a fancy way of saying that any relations assigned to a variable can be used inside a SQL query. So for example, we could call ATP Duck SQL. And inside there, we could say, hey, I'm going to select star from that Britain versus USA relation that you did, union that with the select star from Britain versus Australia variable, and then we'll order the whole thing by tournament ID. And so we can kind of move between, so we can do that SQL, and then we can come back out and go into the into the kind of Python API again, and we can do some filtering and say, hey, just show me the matches that happened before the 31st of December, so 2022. So it's generally going to show us stuff that happened in 2022, and then we'll do the same projection as before and show me 10 results. And you can see now we get some slightly different results. And so I think this is really cool. I really like this, this combination of where you can do some stuff in the Python API, like where you're writing code in there, and then you can go into SQL if you think you can do make, maybe write something a bit, uh, bit, bit easier in there. My only observation so far is that I, when I look at the query plans with the explain function, sometimes they don't look as optimized as if it was pure SQL. So I guess that's a, probably a thing that's going to be developed uh, in the future. Otherwise, this is a really cool thing. I'd encourage you to have a look at it. And I'll see you in the next one.